Having your pride and joy stolen is probably everyone's worst nightmare. So installing a tracker is something lots of people consider to hopefully recover it should the worst happen. There's been a lot of noise about using Apple AirTags as an alternative or even a better option to a GPS tracker. So in this video, we'll take a look at the AirTag, what they're capable of and test their performance against a similar priced GPS tracker. So stay with us to see how they compare. Don't forget to check out our other videos on everything campervan and motorhome related, from solar to water, heating to gadgets, tires to trips. If you like this video, please do hit the thumbs up. It really does help me to know what you like, and you can ask any questions or give feedback in the comments. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of our future videos, please hit the subscribe button and clicking the bell will give you a notification when a new video goes live. Finally, if you do decide to hit the thumbs down, it would be great if you could also leave a comment so I know what you didn't like. No one security device is going to stop your van being stolen or ensure it is recovered. You can see our overall thoughts on security and staying safe in our previous video here, where we talk about the multi-layered security that we use to hopefully make our van less likely to get stolen. One item we mention in this is a tracker. If you've not seen my detailed videos on GPS tracking solutions, where I talk about the different types, things to consider, how they perform, and how to set up a DIY install yourself, you can check it out up here. Both of these videos are also linked in the notes. Apple's AirTag is a Bluetooth or ultra wide band device. It has no GPS, no cellular connection, which means it is small and has great battery life. Lasting 12 months, the battery is user replaceable. It therefore needs no subscription or data SIM. So how does it know where it is and send the information to you? Well, every time any device with Apple's operating system iOS 14.5 or higher installed, like on an iPhone with Bluetooth switched on and a data connection, the AirTag pings that device using Bluetooth and the device then uses its GPS location and sends that to Apple's server as the location of the AirTag. So that means to get your AirTag's location, you are completely reliant on someone's iOS device being nearby. GPS trackers, on the other hand, are a self-contained tracking solution which uses GPS to tell where it is and a cellular connection to send that location to you. You can see more detail on this in my previous tracker video. Let's see how they perform. We're going to compare the performance of the AirTag to this ReachVar GPS tracker, which is similar in size. It has a rechargeable battery which lasts between one and five days, depending on how often it's set to update its location. It can also be powered from the vehicle's battery. We're using a GIFGAF data sim in it, which when permanently connected would cost us around £10 a year in data charges. For our own protection, for the purposes of these tests, we've used random locations that are in no way connected to us or our van. As a first test, let's try our live track. Let's imagine our van has been stolen. I've sped up some of this sequence. We see the difference immediately as the GPS tracker sends a notification to our phone to say it's on the move, as it has the option to set a geofence. With the AirTag, there's no option for this. On the left you can see our GPS tracker and on the right the AirTag. Once moving the GPS tracker updates its location every 10 seconds and as we can see this gives us a regular update of its location, speed and direction allowing us to see exactly where the van is and what it's doing. On the other hand the AirTag hasn't yet updated its location and it's still saying its last location where it was parked 34 minutes ago. As the tracker shows the vehicle stopped in traffic, it must be near someone with an iOS device as the AirTag location updates for the first time 35 minutes after setting off. As we continue to watch the GPS tracker updating the location, we can tell that it's on its way, but the AirTag again is unable to update its location. A few minutes later we get another fix from the AirTag, but between these fixes there are a number of turnings the van could have taken and we would not have known until now that it hadn't. On the GPS tracker we can see that the van is approaching the motorway junction and straight away we can see the exit that is taken and the direction it is travelling.
The van is on the motorway for another nine minutes before we get an indication from the air tag what direction it went. As we continue along the motorway, we can see the occasional update in the air tag location. I think we can confidently say that unless there happens to be a connected iOS device in the vehicle with the air tag, it's likely to be more frustrating than helpful for live tracking, as you wait for it to update and show the direction of travel and what roads it has taken. Here you can see a quick comparison for that live track. Over the same journey of 34 miles, the AirTag pinged five fixes, whereas the GPS provided 246. Another quick point to call out is that when you do get a ping from an AirTag, all you get is its current location. Whereas with the GPS tracker, not only do you get the location, you get the whether it's moving, what direction it's going, and at what speed. You can also recall the whole journey, whether you were watching it or not with the GPS tracker. The AirTag doesn't have this facility. Now let's try a couple of scenarios as if the van had been stolen, we didn't realise it at the time and it's been dumped somewhere. We're going to leave both trackers in a few different locations and see how long it takes us to find out where they are. We're going to start with a busy urban car park. With the GPS tracker we had the location immediately. We had a location immediately with the AirTag, but the accuracy wasn't great. About seven minutes later it focused right in on the location of the van. Now let's try a location a little bit out of town, but still within range of various houses. With the GPS tracker we saw an instant location within five metres of the van. The AirTag on the other hand was initially reporting a location on the way to where it was parked and it took a total of 20 minutes after it arrived before it gave the location. Whilst at the location the GPS tracker was constantly updating us to tell us it was still there. However with the AirTag it was between 1 hour and 4 hours for it to give us an update of its location. Now to try a location that's a bit more rural, away from town, um, it still has people regularly walking past though. As we'd come to expect, the GPS tracker gave us the location instantly to within 5 metres. When we looked for the air tag, well, it wasn't there. It actually looked like it was over a kilometre away in a different direction. We continued to regularly check the location of the AirTag and finally after six hours in the location it gave us a rough idea of where it was. However within the accuracy it provided it could have been on any one of three roads, in lots of buildings or travelling through. We didn't even know whether it was stopped or moving. Our next location is a rural area, it's not really a through road and you would rarely get people travelling past. The GPS tracker provided its location instantly to within 5 metres. However, with the air tag, we were waiting a total of 17 hours before it updated its location. Now to try a location where the air tag may come out on top. So we found an undercover car park. When we check the GPS tracker we see straight away there is no GPS location indicated by the LBS which is local base station. So the GPS is showing us that it's in an area of about a kilometre. Which obviously isn't great. But, as the GPS is continuously updating its location, we can check the historic route and we can see its last fix was approaching the car park. Initially the AirTag gave us its past location, which wasn't particularly helpful, but 45 minutes after arriving it did ping the location and accurately put itself in the car park. 
here's a summary of the results where we can see that the GPS tracker did outperform the Apple AirTag quite significantly in most places. We did find a few other issues of note with the AirTag. Firstly, when it comes to accessing the location of your tag. Currently, you can only access the location from the AirTag owner's iOS device. The Find Me web interface, which shows the location of your devices, doesn't show AirTags, and you can't share access to the tag to someone else's device. So that means if you happen to not have your phone with you, when you found out your van had been stolen, you couldn't get the location and you couldn't borrow a phone or get to a laptop to get it either. The GPS tracker provides interfaces for iOS, Android devices and a web browser. All of these can be accessed by your login and password and you can create guest accounts to share with other people. Since the AirTag was released, there have been a lot of pressure on Apple to add features to prevent them being used to track people. And already we've seen two software upgrades making them less viable as a discrete vehicle tracking solution. Currently, the AirTag will play a sound randomly 8 to 24 hours after it's not been in contact with the owner's device. This will make it pretty useless if you leave your van in storage, for example, as not only is it likely to be beeping when the thief breaks in, giving away its location, I suspect it will also mean the battery will also go flat quicker. Apple continue to be criticised for not going far enough to prevent stalking with these measures. So as the AirTag can be updated with more features at any time, I wouldn't be surprised if we see further features added that make even less viability as a vehicle tracking solution. Even without Apple making any changes, it is surprisingly easy to identify if there is an AirTag in the van. Here you can see a quick scan using a freely available app that only identifies the tile on my ignition key. But when the AirTag is inside the van, here we can see that there is an unknown device. I could then choose to either jam that device or use the signal meter to identify where it is and get rid of it. In conclusion, no tracker is foolproof. GPS, cellular and Bluetooth signals can all be jammed relatively easily. However, most GPS trackers, if the GPS signal is blocked, it will still provide a locality using that cellular base station location. And as having a cellular signal can be quite important to a thief for their own phone, they may be less likely to jam a cellular signal. The advantages of the AirTag, of its size and battery life, are actually well outweighed by the fact that it is rarely giving a location unless it's somewhere where there are regular iOS devices around it. My conclusion is an AirTag could never be a replacement for a GPS tracker, but for the sake of £29, it might be useful as an additional backup to a GPS tracker. It's worth pointing out that when the AirTag is used for what it's really marketed as, for example, finding lost rather than stolen items like keys or wallet, it does the job pretty well, but theft recovery is not what it was designed to do. Thanks for watching our video and as always, if you have any questions or feedback, please pop them in the comments below. If you find the video useful, please like, share and consider subscribing.